sharing their views. And just a reminder, this whole idea, the idea of conversations on social issues came about as a forum for us, all of us here at the college, to exchange ideas. The library hosts it because it's part of our mission to offer different viewpoints, different perspectives. And so it's an extension of what we buy on the shelf, put on the shelves. We want voices. We want the voices to be shared. So some things you may not agree with, but we ask you to be respectful and share your ideas as the time comes. Right. So let's get started. Hi guys, uh, my name is Carlos Hernandez, and uh, we believe the students and staff and faculty and members of community deserve to know about the pros and cons of so getting rid of the whole community from our college. And it's not about to be disagree or to be agreed with, but as a student, uh, the pay fee, uh, the pay fits, and you know the pay for going to school, and as faculty and staff, you know, to take care of this place. I feel that with a certain information and the presentation that we have today will be about it, what is behind the work community in different in different in many different ways. You know, we will be talking uh, about that the entire hour and I will introduce you to Dr. Richard Chris and everyone will include their job. <laughs> All right. I, I'll go first. <laughs> uh, see how I did that? That was, that was, that was very nice of you. Uh, so, so uh, my name is Pedro Marquez. Uh, I'm a member of the ASC Council, uh, your Associated Student Council. Um, I guess I'll just speak from a personal aspect right now. Uh, you know, community. Sometimes people just kind of say that it's just a word, but uh, you know, as a student that uh, already has uh, flunked out of college once, took about three to four years off. Uh, you know, when I lived down the street and I saw the name on the side of the building, and I knew when it said community that I could go to this school. You know, I knew that they were going to accept me. I mean, as long as I could pay for it, of course. Uh, but I knew that I could get enrolled. You know, I didn't have to have a certain GPA. I didn't have to have a certain amount of credits. I knew that uh, once I walked in, that they were gonna allow me to go to school here. And uh, I mean, thank goodness that they did. It's totally changed my life. Uh, I'm working on my bachelor's right now at this campus. And um, I think sometimes, uh, you know, I think a lot of other students kind of feel that same way. Even if you didn't so much look at that word and know that you could come here, you knew that this campus was open to everybody and was open doors for anyone that wanted to come in and try to get an education that could afford it. And uh, I truly believe that by removing the word community out of our name, it's gonna make us seem more uh, exclusive to people. I truly believe that uh, a person like me, maybe look at that name and without community, probably wouldn't even come through the doors. Because uh, a lot of people think sometimes that uh, when we're not a community college, that we're a private university or we're a private college, that you need certain requirements to get in, and uh, I think that's just painting a false picture to a lot of people. Um, so I mean, at least to me, I feel that it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it really, it really does mean a lot to have that word uh, in our name, and uh, especially I feel that, um, I mean, we are a community. You know, a lot of stuff happens on this campus that doesn't happen on a lot of other campus. A lot of activism, a lot of groups come here to protest, a lot of marches. Uh, I mean, a lot of great things, you know, forums, different forums, different debates, politicians come here and debate. Uh, I mean, we're in the heart of the Seattle community. Uh, so at least for me, I feel that uh, it is a very important word. You know, it does mean a lot. It's not just uh, part of the name. You know, it does show people that uh, this is an open campus. We welcome anybody, we welcome everybody that wants to come and try to get an education. Uh, and I feel that uh, they, they tell us that it's a new trend that uh, schools are dropping the word community. That we're getting looked down upon uh, because we still have it in our name and we have, we have bachelor's programs. Uh, to me it goes right back to, uh, I don't want to follow what everybody else is doing. You know, just because everyone else is dropping the name, uh, community out of their name, I, I don't want to. 
you know, I don't feel that we just need to fall in line with everybody else because that's what everybody else is doing right now. Because that's the popular thing to do that, uh, uh, so, you know, we should just copy what everybody else is doing. Uh, you know, I know, uh, I guess without, you know, with our, in our history, a lot of people get discriminated against and a lot of times we're taught just to change who you are to uh, please the other person. And sometimes I feel that that's a message that's getting sent that, uh, you know, um, people look down upon you because you got your education at a community college. And I don't think that's the way it should be. Even if that is the way it should be, we should be educating these people and showing them that even though we did go to community college, our education is just as good as anybody else's other education that we got anywhere else. You know, that we can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody that went to UW or went to Seattle U, that we're just as educated as they are. And uh, I think we should work on embracing the word, showing people that who we are and how great this school is, and uh, not just by changing the name and painting a false picture to people. Um, so, I mean, that's just kind of how I feel. You know, um, this school means a lot to me. Uh, it's really helped me out. It's helped me get out of a bad place I once was at. And uh, it's helped me move on and be a better person and, uh, you know, succeed in the society. So, this is how I feel. <laughs> I'm Nikki Rigor. I have been a student here for four years and uh, an active member at uh, the Multicultural Office and at Info Central. Um, I wanted to start off with a quote that I found by Dr. Maya Angelou. And it says, <clears throat> words are things. You must be careful, careful about calling people out of their names, using racial pejoratives and sexual pejoratives and all that ignorance. Don't do that. Someday we'll be able to measure the power of words. I think they're things. They get on the walls, they get in your wallpaper, they get in your rugs, in your upholstery, in your clothes, and finally into you. So, of course she's, you know, talking about racial slurs and, and derogatory terms towards people, but one of those things that I think she really mentions here is that names are powerful. Like, they really mean something, and it's, it's something that we need to realize, that words really have a heavy impact. And there's all this talk about this negative connotation with community when it comes to education, but if you take you know, a look deeper at what the word community really means, it just means a group of people coming together um, and belonging somewhere. And this school has really created something like that for me. I, I have a similar story to Pedro as I, I flunked out of Western Washington University, and I came here at the urging of my parents. <laughs> uh, my mom went here, my dad taught here. And uh, Tina Young was one of those people that just took me under her wing and I've transformed here into somebody that has the confidence to talk in front of people. I've, I've never been able to do that before. Um, the school is a very special place. Uh, it's a very good example of what low income education can be if people are taught to care. Um, in all my classes, they've been very grounded in the humanities and in social justice. Um, a lesson that's permeated all my classes, even science classes. Um, teachers are very passionate here. Um, it's something that I haven't even seen at Shoreline. I have a lot of friends who go to Shoreline and to North, and they don't feel as passionate about their community college as, as we do here. And I think we are a really good shining example of that. And if we take away the word community, we kind of uh, we kind of take away the message of what we stand for. You know, people from all different backgrounds, all different places can can really rise up and be exemplary people in, in the community. So that's where I'm coming from. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know, um, so there's been some uh, contention. Sorry, I'm Casey Jayworth. I work with the student magazine um, that all of you have, are funding, whether you know it or not. <laughs> um, I'm curious. There's been some controversy over student support for the name change, and I'm, so I'm curious to see, like, by a show of hands, uh, who's in favor, who's neutral, and who's opposed to the name change. So the proposal to, to drop community from our name, so we'd be Seattle Central College instead of Seattle Central Community College. Who's in favor of this measure? So two. Who's neutral about this measure? Not sure which side you're on. Seven, eight, and who's opposed? So uh, we thanks. I just 
obviously this isn't necessarily a representative sample of the whole student body or community, but every person, it seems to me like there's a big difference between the, the district says that there's widespread student and faculty support for the name change. Uh, yesterday at, the, at another forum on the name change, the, the audience was very strongly against the name change. Here it looks like most people are either opposed to it or neutral about it. Um, and the circuit did a poll uh, where we, we uh, got about 300 responses. And what we found is that there's a lot of division in people's views on the name change with a slight, very slight majority opposed to it. But a lot of people on the fence and a fair number of people in favor of it. So the big thing I want to bring to all of you today is that I'm not, I'm skeptical of the process by which the administration has taken community and student input into this decision. It's not clear to me that we've been given a real voice or a real input into this decision process. And for me, that's what's really at stake in this, in this name change. Like, the name by itself, I don't really care. But what I do care about is who owns this school? Are we just employees in training who get pumped through a machine on our way to jobs? Or are we stakeholders who get a say in who and what this school is? So, thanks for listening. I'm, I'm Richard. I, um, I'm a philosophy professor and my expertise is religion. How many of you are familiar with the television show called Community? Well, it's not getting much attention, is it? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's set in a community college. Um, and, and, it's, that's, and that's where the name comes from. And I think in, in, in watching it, especially the first, I remember the very first time it was on, um, it, it, it's, the, sh the show it starts with some of the cliches that the administration talks about that are negative. And, and, and a lot of that is, is, is real. You know, I did my PhD at a very elite university, pri private university, in fact. My other education was at public universities, but uh, you know, I was, I went right to a, a research university out of high school. I, I didn't go to any other college on the way, and I, when I was a college student, I looked down on the idea of community college because there's a hierarchy, and, and when you're at the top of that hierarchy, everything is down. And so it, it, it was, it's easy enough for a TV show to come along and, and play with some of those same ideas. But in learning about education, which you do by being involved in education, I, I've, I've come to have different views. And of course now I'm teaching in a community college, so I have actual experience with what a community college is. And I, 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 I see that, that the negative stereotypes are out there because they're there in the media, and, and I had them my, used to have them myself. But I'm, I, I'm not convinced that all of that outweighs positives that, the, that it does bring, as you heard from, from other students here. Because those are also very real things in the world. So it seems like both, both claims have some viability, you know, that the name means something to, to some people, that as this, the symbol, sim, sim, symbols ultimately are, are arbitrary. What makes them important is how we use them. Well, okay, so this one has a history of use that has become important to some people. It has a history of use that is, is looked as bad to some people. So it's a mixed bag. Well, in changing it, we lose that symbol, and, and as the proposal stands, we just literally, the symbol, the symbolism of that one word is, is what changes. And, and that would lose both the problematic and the positive that is pointed to. <coughs> Does one outweigh the other? And, and how do we measure that? And I, I think that those are hard questions to answer. I, I think, 
come back to this primarily sort of seeing it the way that, that Casey was talking about it. That there's there's a there there is an institution that is here that has people in it who are part of it and, and it has it has a name, it's carried in symbols. And all of that has special meaning to the people who are part of it, and that's what community is. And and we want to aspire to a more and more democratic forms of community, the decision making, who's deciding on the symbolism. So that process for decision making oh. is, is, is living the symbolism or failing to. And I, I think it's important that we, that we try, to, try to encourage procedures that are going to live up to those ideals. So, so on, on, on that kind of grand, in that grand kind of theoretical sense, I, I have problems with the idea of changing the name. Because I, I don't know how to measure it, and I'm worried about the decision process. But on the practical side, I have a different set of objections, which is also, in a way, symbolic. Like, I worry that the administration is overly concerned with symbols and under concerned with the reality, the tangible on the ground reality that we all live with, like in the bathrooms that need a lot of attention and more, especially from more janitorial staff that, that we used to have but don't have anymore and, and more upkeep. And, and there's all kinds of things that need attention, need money from the administration to help with. Changing would be an expensive thing. Initiating the process was an expensive thing, hiring consultants and all of that. And why? If it is, if it is just the, the symbol that they may have some problems with, but they know other people, other people want to celebrate. So why, why pay to lose that? Maybe if it was free, I'd, be, I'd just have a trouble with the decision making. Even if I didn't have trouble with the decision making, I still have trouble with the money. So I, I see problems both practical and theoretical with it, from my point of view. So uh, uh, as, as a student here, Pedro, Nikki have talked about how they came and I really identify with them now. When I came here, I didn't know to speak English. And that was like, I started basic education as a lot of people. It's almost the program the community college offered to a lot of low-income students who can know how to speak English. And I didn't know to speak English. And now I speak a little better. I need to learn that. <laughs> but uh, I am in the process of speak learning more. And uh, but this really helped me a lot to have the opportunity to come to a place like this and find those opportunities and find the people and find this big, you know, community and this many staff and faculty who you feel that care for you because I feel there's a big difference between community and college and actually it's, it's not something that I am saying, it's something that there are facts. There is a big difference between what is a community college and what is a college and yes, you know, there is, there is the things in favor so I don't know if you get the survey online, not that, that Casey actually did a, did a survey where he put both sizes he asked what question people disagree about it and, and he should pros and cons. But uh, actually we get a survey for one week. Every student gets a survey that basically tell us why it's good to change the name and um, tell us are you agree or disagree or you strong agree. So and this was just five days, you know. And I asked myself and I asked to the world's trustee when I went there. You know, you expect me as a student, you know, you expect students, you know, most students have jobs, most students have family, most students have classes, has homework, and a lot of students doesn't really have the time to check an email, you know, if you send an email asking their opinion, and if they have time and they check the email, and the information that is in a survey there, that everything is good about it, getting rid of the name, or if you basically telling me in a survey, you know, all these good things will happen if we change the name, most of the students would say, yes, man, these people is helping me, it's caring about me. 
So let's change the name. But if we get that survey, I don't know how many of you guys check it out. But I didn't answer the survey because I thought that they didn't put both sides. They just put one size. And I feel cheer for the survey, so I didn't answer the survey. And I would guess we get the survey. And we have the survey for one way. The thing is, you need to know to what is the good thing so also college, especially Cerro Centro Community College, is a place who has been characterized for being this has this big activism, you know, and social justice is the kind of place that people doesn't use ignore things when the things happen. You know, we are used to using ignore social problems or ignore what is wrong. But in Seattle Centro, we had different, you know, teachers. We had a lot of youth leaders, you know, who they don't ignore things. And it's something very peculiar from here. And you will learn a lot of different skills in this college if you get to know the people from here. And something great about Seattle Community College 2001 we was the number one college, community college around the nation, Times Magazine, number one. I don't know how many of you guys knew about it, but yes, we was number one co uh, community college in the entire nation by Time Magazine. And don't, don't take my words, go to look it up online, and you will find out, and you will find the article, and what it say about Seattle Centro, and the census community that people have. And you know, in my, in, in my young, I will talk about my opinion, and then I will talk about facts. For me, is the whole community is mean a lot. It's mean family, and it's mean unity. It's mean people, you know, from everywhere, coming together and working together, making change, you know, helping each other, you know, and overcoming in many ways different obstacles you know that we face. For me that's community and yes, uh, for me it's no use a word like in my own opinion, but I mean this is how I feel, you know, I don't know how people feel about it. And uh, but I wanna talk about now the difference, you know, between a community college and a college. A community college is more funded, you know, by the government. We are have public funding. So yes, we are public funding. And we get this funding and we had a lot of programs that support that community. The people who can barely afford you know, to pay for education because education every year is just growing and growing. And when students have their degree, they just had a lot of loans to pay greater than you know the, the had a good job where they can have a successful life like normally would be basically in the United States. But sadly they face, you know, this big wall where they need to pay these many loans and this very expensive, you know, tuition. Every year is growing and growing and growing. And um, community college gives you that opportunity, gives you programs, you know, that can help you. There is basic education program, multicultural and Seattle Central program. We had a GED program. We had a TRIO program. We had these kind of programs who help, you know, a lot of people who can barely afford to, to pay for education. I just imagine, you know, a place without this program, or people not knowing about the, a college offer this kind of program that support members of our community, the people who really need it. So when I think about it, you know, who we serve, and who Seattle Central Community College serve, I am very serious, because personally, I am very serious about people. For me, people is most important. For me, everyone is equal. I don't care if you, this person is a millionaire, if you, this person is not a millionaire, or if he has a car, I don't care. For me, people is people. And if you something affect people, you will have a problem with me. And I will do something about it. Because we shouldn't just ignore what is wrong. And sadly, that's what we had learned every single day, most of the time, or wherever we go, we had learned, yes, just focus on yourself, and if something is happening, it's not your problem. Don't do nothing about it. It shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't ignore what's wrong. And it's when it's affecting us, and it's affecting people, a lot of people tell me, oh, that doesn't affect me. Really? How do you know it's not affecting you? You know, there is many ways that things can affect a person. And sadly, they have teach us, you know, that a lot of things doesn't really affect us. When, when in the end, if we really think about it, that we, we came with a conclusion that yes, you never know if your kids will get here, or you never know what kind of education they will have in the future. So don't tell me that doesn't affect you. Because if you really think about it, and think of all the different possibilities about it, this change, you will, you will find a point where you will recognize it's affecting you. 
And yes, I, I am the kind of person that get in trouble very often, but I don't really regret it. And I had consequence, but you know, I rather, you know, stand up with people and stand up for what's right than, you know, just let it go things like normally we are used to. And uh, I want to talk to about, you know, the, the people who is the world's trusty is five people. I mean, I know that a lot of great staff here and a lot of, a lot of faculty, the people who really move this college, the one who I see every day, and they are working, a lot of staff and faculty here has inspired many students to don't get up, you know, to finish their degree. So these are the people who should be choosing, you know, we should vote with people. The students pay fees, you know, faculty and staff, they move this place. You know, they empower the students. There is counselors, there is motivators, teachers. Each, the teacher serves us many ways here in the, in the college. And you know that 70% of the teachers that are here are part-time. You know why they are part-time? Because they don't wanna get that many benefits. But they are still coming every day, you know? And they maybe doesn't have millions of benefits. Sadly, in the United States, they underappreciate teaching. But I feel it's one of the greatest <coughs> things, you know, that we need. We need teachers, we need people conscious, you know? The help us to move on, but sadly it's underappreciated and shouldn't be underappreciated. But anyway, 70% of the teacher in Seattle Central, and I think in, in almost any college that you will be, will, uh, that you will go, will be teachers, you know, who are part time. And uh, that's very sad, in my opinion, because I feel it's the most important part, you know, as a society. Have a strong group of people motivated to teach and to, to uh, enrich and to empower you know, people to change society. But sadly, a lot of people prefer not to be teachers because they worry about to survive in the future. So, but anyway, the five people who are making the decision for us is uh, Jorge Carrasco. Jorge Carrasco is this guy. He has been working almost his entire life in privatized public sectors and small companies. Uh, a little while ago, he became the CEO. I wasn't the CEO, I was the, the general manager at the time that he became the manager. And I am pretty sure about the information I am giving because I, I have been doing the research for a little while and, um, and I am pretty sure about all the information that I could get, that's what I am giving. I am the kind of person that I am very serious about saying things about other people. But there's many interests behind changing the world community and it is not, you know, Sadly, it's not the interest of the community or the people we serve. That would be amazing <laughs> if, you know, we would change the need to support the people from Seattle Central Community College. That would be pretty cool. I would be so happy with salaries. It is no things that are white. And just the process of doing it, it is very under the water. And in Seattle Central, is the only place that we know that this is happening. In South Seattle and North Seattle, go to us. One or two students will tell you that they know about it. Why? Because we haven't had many information about it. But anyway, Jorge Carrasco has been working and to private, uh, to private many companies who are public and small companies. And he now he is the CEO because he's self-made CEO. He could get more pay, but he was general manager of you know City Light. So City Light is a public company in Seattle that gives light to almost all Seattle. I know you that the, the employers. For city life, if you go to the strangers and not you the strangers, other newspapers too, they will have different articles about the process for uh, Carrasco, Jorge Carrasco to become the CEO of city life because it was very clear. It was like, it's like what happening right now here. So a lot of the workers were pissed off because they were firing the person who was before him. The other person uh, is uh, Courtney Gregory. And uh, I will try to be as most quickly, but I just feel very, you know, because I feel that it's in jazz, you know. But so Albert Shane, he had two companies uh, in, in Seattle. Um, he had one company that made designs for uh, private and public companies in construction. And he had, a, his member was another, He's a part, he had a partnership in other business. I don't know if you know Shane, but he, Albert Shane, he was a 
he was the one of the person who was running for city council. Maybe you saw him TV <laughs> during his campaign. But uh, he had another, he has a partnership, you know, with a lot of business in, in Asia and business here in the in Seattle to connect, you know, different business. He had the agencies, different businesses. Uh, there is two women in the city council. Uh, one was one was there. She is a broker. I don't know if you guys ever has. I never hear that term before. But I learned. <laughs> but a broker is a person who invests in the bank. And uh, I don't know how to explain in English that. But uh, is a broker is a person who invests in the you know in the bank or your your actions in different companies. But even if you, you lost your money, they will still get it back. They will still you know have you know some profit from it. And, uh, and the last person, I didn't find anything, so I don't want to say anything about a king because I haven't really, I would be a liar if I say, oh, this, I find that it is very concrete thing about this person. I find a lot of different things with this guy, I didn't find that much about a king. And, and the only thing that I want to say that it's very important that you guys had the information. It is important that students, staff, and faculty had the information you know, about this. You know, the pros and cons was getting rid of the work community. And uh, we, will, we will have flyers around the school uh, explaining what are the pros and cons. If you go to the, to the magazine that he wrote, he wrote a very good article, you will find a lot of pros and cons too. So it is very important to think about it. And today we, we are going to the Board of Trustees. Today at 1.30 p.m. We are leaving from here to go to the Board of Trustees because we are going to talk in the Board of Trustees asking them about the, the work community, about to get rid because they basically signing today even though they have signed a little while ago, but they want to make this thing like, but we need a lot of support from students there. And uh, I already want to end, but uh, it is very important that you guys know and let people know you know the information. You deserve to know. Yes, there's two people over there with their hands raised. We have Lynn and both Winner and me talking about the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. who yeah, the board of yes, oh, the board of trustee. I didn't get a good explanation about it. Sorry, but the board of trustee basically is uh, these five people, you know, who not just represent Seattle Central, represent South Seattle and North Seattle, because North Seattle and South Seattle they are changing the name too. So there is this group that is chosen by the governor of the of, the, of Washington, and is you know and is representing the five colleges, <coughs> and they are the one who basically make all the decisions. And uh, that's the board's trustee. So this is the person who's making the decision uh, about changing the name. But uh, there is many interests. I, I stood before behind it, and sadly the interests that are behind are not really the interests of people in many ways. And it is Did I understand you correctly earlier when we were, we're going to take some time before to open up for, for discussion and questions? Yes. I just get so passionate. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but do you guys have any questions or any comments? I have a, I have a question. Um, the gentleman who just left, he was saying to me that he felt that the college would get more money if they um, changed their name, that they would have a better presence. Have you heard anything to that effect? I would say as of right now, I haven't heard anything that's going to promise us any more money. Uh, anytime I ask any administration about whether the changes, they keep saying nothing's going to change. Our mission statement's going to stay the same. So to me, why are, why are we making this change if you are telling us that nothing's going to come from it? Or you can't guarantee anything to come from it. We have a lot of hopes and promises that could come from us removing the name. Um, but there's no guarantee that anything's, we could still be the same exact school that we are right now but, uh, with a different viewpoint. And I think also uh, what we're missing is, um, you know, if they really felt that way, I really truly, I believe that if the Board of Trustees really felt that way, our president really felt that way, uh, then they would have came out and said it. You know, they started a subcommittee in 2001. That's been three years that they could have let people know about what's going on. Uh, 2011? 2011. 2011, sorry, okay. sorry 2011. Uh, so, that, I mean, that's been three years that these, uh, these people at top have had the opportunity to express their opinion, let people know what's going on, get voices heard, 
I mean, many things that they could have done. I mean, as of right now, I can't even find anybody that know what's going on about this name change in our school. And uh, they're so good about saying that they've done a hard search and made sure that they got the voices of everybody. When I truly believe I've probably told more people than they have. Um, you know, I've reached more people than they have. So. Yeah. So have you all um, had sit downs with our administration? Yeah. Have any of you up there had sit downs with administrative or, or board of trustees or? Official ones? No. I've emailed board of trustees. I've been in meetings with uh, Kilpatrick and I've asked the same questions and they know I've never gotten an answer. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put forward my opinion, which I think that there are two reasons for changing the name from community college to college. And, and it does revolve around that. I think that you can market a college, and very specifically, and please understand that I work with and have worked with international students for over two dozen, two decades at this institution. So it is not a slam on international students. It is simply stating the fact that you can market to international students markets much better with the word college as opposed to community college. So I think that that's something that really needs to be um, transparent. It, it's a marketing thing. Yeah, I think right? that's something they should let us know. And, and I think the other thing that um, is maybe more up in the air, but it seems to be presented as um, a reason, aside from the, the survey results, is that um, this has more cachet for our four-year um, degree recipients. And, and in some ways, it certainly does have more quote-unquote cachet. But I would also look at us not only as one institution or as a district, but also statewide and maybe nationally, that there is that movement amongst two-year institutions to start awarding four-year degrees but it still is nonetheless a very, very small percentage. And even the projections out, and our state has projections out in the next decade of the numbers of those who would be recipients of four-year degrees. And so that percentage also is relatively small. So we're talking about the impact possibly on two discrete populations that are attending the community college not only here at Seattle Central, not only within the Seattle Community College District, but statewide and also nationally. So I think that, you know, I would really like to see that kind of conversation that hasn't taken place. And, and I don't think that um, administration or the district or even the board of trustees are being very um, transparent about some of those agendas. Because I think that we all have agendas. I have agendas all the time, all the time. But I think that there needs to be a certain amount of transparency. On that. I 100% agree with that. And I think that that's something that they have dropped the ball on. I don't think they have told us anything. You know, when this started, I was going to faculty union meetings. I went to the Wolsey union meeting. And they were finding out from me that this was happening. Uh, you know, and that's shocking. That really means that these administrators aren't taking any time to let anybody know what's going on. And I personally feel it's a way that they can keep it as quiet as they can so they make sure that they can do it without as much disruption from anybody. Because when this got brought up last spring, they had a huge form instantly that was totally against this. Uh, and they stayed quiet for about six months until October when Dr. Kilpatrick came to our college council meeting that I was in and said that they would like us to look at it again. You know, and I asked them, I asked them the same thing. I thought this was a dead issue. You know, after all, everyone that was already upset about it, um, I, you know, I felt like it was dead. A lot of faculty members felt like it was a dead issue. A lot of classified staff felt like it was a dead issue. So for them to come back and do it so sneaky like this, I feel like it is, uh, yeah, they're not being transparent. I feel like it is part of their job to let us know what's going on. Um, and for my part, I'm, 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 I'm worried that what you're talking about is is is, a, is signaling a shift in emphasis because both of those programs are moving away from the core mission of the college. Exactly, and, and I think that those are the and I'm sorry to have this dialogue, everyone, but I think that those are the corollary, you know, the secondary um, dialogues or conversations that need to take place that we need to acknowledge. So, absolutely, mm -hmm. I mean, and 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 that 
to me really belies the, the, um, the assertion that the district office, the, the administration, will remain true to the quote unquote mission of the community or the two year institutions. And that's the answer you know with the students deserve to know, faculty deserve to know about this information, they shouldn't do it away, should be clear. I have two things, two separate things to add. One goes to what Tina's remark about potentially increased marketing to international students. In, in case, just in case you're not aware, we have, I believe I heard, the largest population, if not one of the largest populations in the state system. We have about 1,500 out of not quite 10,000 students. 1,900. 1,900. Wow. That's, that's almost 20% of our, our student population. Now, the point of all this is <clears throat> international students pay top dollar and, right. they, never, and they never get a break. If, if she comes from another state, she pays non-resident tuition for a year, but then she pays resident tuition, okay? For an international student, no matter how long you're here, you pay top dollar, okay? So this, this is a kind of a cynical, our marketing for it. We have the largest population. We already get top dollar. We want more of them. Yeah. We, see. we need more state support for education. That's yeah. the point. We, you know, this is a, the trying to make it up by appealing to foreign students. Right. They miss their obligation. They should be lobbying the legislature. The other, the other point I wanted to make was, interestingly enough, um, a couple of years ago, this, this school built a brand new Wood Technology Center just south, just below South Jackson, twenty-three and a half million dollars. Beautiful place. Beautiful, beautiful place. I am. They haven't put they haven't put the Seattle Community College sign up yet because they anticipate this change. They didn't want to waste the money to pay for an expensive sign that they didn't have to remodel. Yeah. So it's been almost three years that they have no no identifying sign. It just says Wood Technology Center. They yeah. could belong. Very confusing. No, it says Seattle Central. It doesn't say Seattle Central in what. Okay. It just yeah. says Seattle Central. Yeah. In anticipation. In anticipation. <laughs> Again, rather cynical, I think. It, 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 it only can lead you to suspect that they plan have planned on doing this for a long time. But again, only recently came out of it. The money that they could use, you know, we had a very bad restrooms, we had a lot of other facilities, you know, that are not working good, and uh, like classrooms, like right now, if you, if you go to any classroom, you go to other buildings that they are abandoned, you know, because it is, you know, it is look very, very bad. So, you know, to take the whole community from every single thing, every single thing that say community, is need to get rid, and they haven't get to us, you know, any information about how much shit that will cost. And they will, they will, they can use this, you know, this money to support students and to fix our restrooms, to fix, you know, the infrastructure. So that's my question too, you know, why don't you say to improve our college? Who has other questions? You know, I'm going back to statement was like, why should we do it because everybody else is doing it? And I think that's a good point because one of the points that were brought up in that first forum was the woman from financial aid saying when they go around to schools and they're saying where, are people, where on the list of people's school choices, they want to go to a college no matter what. And so using that as a rationale. Well, you know what? I think it means we need more explanation or because how do you still have how do you still have wood construction in a community college and a lot of things that we do? How do we rationalize over as time goes on? And I mean, putting all the pieces together of these people on our board of trustees that come from a history of privatizing, whatever. Um, that's an interesting little fact too, I think. So yeah. And, and the whole question of asking where do you want to go? Yeah. People will say a college, and then you have to drill down. So, right. I mean, it's, it's how you ask the question mm -hmm. and, and what kind of answer you're looking for when you ask those questions. And so that's a very loaded question right. in and of itself. Well, and not to mention, whether you go to Bellevue College or whatever college, if it's, a two, if it's mostly two years, you're still going to have to go someplace else. So that's kind of like misinterpreting or mis, um, what's that word? Representing. I'd be curious to hear 
from some of the students over here. What do you, what do you all think of the name change? What are your concerns? What are the pros and cons that you see? Me, I'm concerned because I, maybe you're going to make the student pay more money for their tuition who comes here. So if the name changes, maybe they will be forced to pay more. And those students who come here, they are of low income. And maybe they don't have that money to, to pay for the future. So they will be forced to drop out. So I'd like to share a few things. My name is Talia Mitchell, and I'm sorry I walked, I didn't realize it was being filmed and I walked right in front of the camera. <laughs> So my colleagues, I think, have done an amazing job sharing different perspectives, and hopefully I can bring something different to the table to give you guys more of a broader view of what I think, what we all think is going on. I think you've heard from people that have a lot of factual information. I think you've heard from people who have a lot of passion behind it. And the view I want to show you guys, and I'm so glad what you said, Tina, because that's kind of right on track of what I want to say. I want to talk first about the pros and changing the name. I am completely against it, but I think it's important for our board of trustees to come clean with actual reason, a real legitimate reason why they want to change the name. At least at that point, they can have more validity and we can have better talks or arguments with them with what they're actually doing. First and foremost, it is my opinion and a lot of statistics and facts, and if you look at the tuition for international students, it makes absolute sense that removing the word community will boost enrollment with international students. Many of the international students I've spoken with and that are also on some of the committees that I chair are like, yeah, in our home country, there's no such thing as a community college. When we go back home, say, to Vietnam or to Singapore or Malaysia or wherever it may, may be, and we present our transcripts that we came from a community college, <coughs> people look at us like we're crazy, and it's this extra step for them to figure out what that is, because there are no community colleges in their country. So taking that word away and having college makes the transition to their universities much smoother. That makes sense. The fact that the federal government has started to decrease funding to community colleges since 2006, and changing the name could potentially boost funding as we could be viewed as a university, that makes sense to me. It's a possibility. I've heard rumors about that. The other thing is that it'll appeal more to the international students. That makes sense to me. But on the <laughs> flip side, there's a pocket of people that I think are being forgotten, and that's the basic and transitional students, which is really where my opinion rolls into this. So you're, we're talking about the GED students, we're talking about the ESL students, and we're talking about the adult basic education students. These students are domestic and they are international. You have people who need to learn English who were both born here and grew up in families where English wasn't really spoken, and you have people that are from other countries that are learning English. According to Lauren DeZazzo, who's the Dean of Basic and Transitional Studies, about 3,000 students a year fit into the Basic and Trans Transitional Studies program. My big concern, personally, with removing the name is not the name, so to speak, is that indication that having that name there, having that word community, means that it's accessible to everyone, it means that it's more affordable than, say, a college, and that they offer programs that anyone can enter into. You don't go to a university and find GED prep. That's something you find at a community college or at various community centers or institutions that help people with that. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily find ESL, and you certainly don't find adult basic education at UW. So my fear is that by do taking that word away, you're making it less accessible to those students. Those programs might still be here, they might not, I don't know, I can't give you facts with that, I don't know what the future holds. What I can say is when people look at the sign or look at the name, they don't know necessarily that those programs are there. Now, is there a possibility that the school is gonna spend money to advertise and promote that those programs are there? Of course there are, but I don't know that. I don't think that people sitting here know that. I don't think anyone in the school really knows if that's gonna happen. So with the administration or board of trustees particularly coming clean with us with an actual plan, when I've spoken to Dr. Kilpatrick on several occasions about this and questioned these issues, he didn't have a particular answer for me as to what will happen or could happen. It's all, to me, 
it seems like it's all up in the air, and that's my major concern. Maybe changing the name is this fantastic thing. Will present to me and the people here why it's a fantastic thing. What's the actual long range plan? What's it actually going to cost? Estimates. Give us an estimate. What is it going to do? What is it going to change? How are you going to advertise the school to make sure that people know it's still accessible? But you're not telling us that. And if you're not telling me that, if you're not telling other people that, if the people here don't know that, if, like Peter said, some of the faculty when he goes to meetings don't know what's going on, that raises a major concern to me. Why don't we know? Why aren't you telling us? And if this has been going on, as far as I know personally for a year, it might have been going on longer than that, but that's personally what I know. Why is it still kind of under the rug and something we don't know about? And then it's, are people even thinking about that? Maybe they have this long range plan that's gonna solve all these problems or concerns that we're talking about, but if we don't know what they are, we don't know that that's gonna happen. So that's in particular what I wanted to discuss and bring to the table for you guys to think about. Yeah, we're we'll going to talk about uh, uh, benefits, advantage and disadvantage of changing the name, but now we should talk about solution. So what is the solution to stop them to change the name, or what is the solution to bring them to the table and discuss? So what do you have? So what that's what has been, you know, uh, I get to know this a little while ago, I think, spring quarter of the last year or something, but I just hear a rumor and I didn't actually hear something very concrete and then I hear this a little while ago. Blue tents to, you know, to Seattle Centro that we had a student leadership that we had a good uh, government, rep student government representative that they like to let people know what's happening. And I feel like Pedro, Talia, most of the members of the student government started, you know, to make petitions and to ask questions and to give them information. I get involved in this, like, I think, one month ago. But I think that we need to organize and we need to demand, you know, we deserve to know. So we had we had community, the community forum that Pedro was organizing yesterday with Max. We had this presentation today. We had flyers, we had a protest. That last, I don't know if you guys hear about the protest that we had in front of the school. So we want that people know, you know, it's not about if you are disagree or you are agree. It's about doing something, you know, it's about getting that information. So today, for example, we, we are going to the Boros Trustees. I've been to the last Boros Trustees, the Warden in North Seattle. I got to talk with Carrasco, and I didn't feel that guy very good, to be honest, and I don't trust him. So, but we are going today at one o'clock to talk, you know, and to, to stand up, you know, for, for our students, you know, asking they this question, the same question that we have talked here, you know, that the same question that the teacher had, the same question that you guys may have, the question that we have, you know, to be give you the opportunity. Today we are living at one thirty. We are going to Seattle to talk, you know, to the Board of Trustees. They are meeting today and basically it's very critical. Today they signed the paper, you know, basically saying you know, today is the possibility that they send this paper, and if you they sign this paper, it will be a little hard to do something about it. So that's what's very critical right now that we can get as, as many students as we can today to the World Trustee. We are living a student leadership today at 130. And if you guys are interested and you guys want really feel, you know, want to ask questions and get to know more from them, you guys are welcome to come with us. We will really appreciate it, seriously. Student leadership is where? Oh, we will, uh, student leadership is right there. You know, it's uh, up with the, with the bookstore. So we are living from there at one party. We are going to Sociara. And uh, something that I was, I know like I think uh, three weeks ago that was, the Board of Trustee was supposed to be a Seattle Center, but for some reason they decided to go to Sociara. So now we need to go to that. But yeah, I mean, I think just speaking on solutions, like he says, these are the people that are making the decision to vote on it. So, I mean, basically we have to change their minds or to at least get them to vote against it. Uh, I've been going to the mass couple board of trustees meetings. They have a public comment section uh, just to voice our opinion. Uh, I mean, believe it or not, you know, students make a difference. You know, we pay the bills. I mean, let's get real. Our tuition is what makes this place run. Um, so if we can put enough influence on the board of trustees to not do this, um, I mean, that's, that's, that's the solution. I feel like that's the only solution as of right now is to convince them not to change the name. I don't feel like convinced that actually we need to demand to vote for it because I feel that, like, you know, we are paying tuition 
you know, and start the faculty that the people to, to run this place. And I feel we should demand, you know, to have the board. Because where they talk about democracy in the United States, but most of the time I don't really see the democracy. You know, it's like always two or three people deciding for us. Where they should decide for us, you know? Where they should decide for all the people. I feel people they need to demand, you know, to have the voice, you know. I like what Josh, when he went with me to the Board of Trustees, he said something. Why should we, you know, focus on the stigma, those community college? You know what, we shouldn't focus and embrace it. Why? Which we shouldn't focus and embrace all the good things that community college have. You know, we talk about being number one college in Time Magazine. Well, we shouldn't focus, you know, that energy to embrace what we are and to make it better. And I like that question. And I feel we deserve to know too. We deserve, you know, to go there and we deserve to have a voice there too. We have one last comment here. I think we're out of time. Uh, it occurs to me that maybe what the, what the uh, uh, trustees or the people making the decision are up to is uh, you know, concerning both the name change and the, the long sustained uncertainties about it, it's maybe like a very low calorie version Naomi Klein's shock doctrine. It's like to get all the stakeholders into a, a sort of a jelly mood where they'll submit to uh, other and worse changes. So. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would, I, I would advocate reading Naomi Klein if you have it. Yeah. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. I, I want to thank you all for being here today. It's really exciting to me as an educator when students are standing up and speaking their mind and getting active. And um, I would encourage all of you that this is a place where you can be active, if should you wish to do so. Um, we run this series of social conversations on social issues. We run it every Thursday at noon in this room. And this is the last one for spring, for winter quarter, but for spring quarter we have coming up um, the right to die, the only true choice. The hijab, what does it say about Muslim women? Um, we have Raven Chronicles Poets Examine Race. So it'll be poetry about race in America. Um, will China rule the world? I think that topic might be changed a little. <laughs> Prison Industrial <laughs> Complex. Um, King County 10 year plan to end homelessness. Where's that gone? And um, topic with ethics of, of the climate crisis. No. I don't know. My notes aren't that good yet. But we'll, we'll have some very exciting topics coming up. Awesome, right. We will send an email out to the community, but we also have them posted at the reference desk in the library, so you can come and see what's coming up next, and we welcome you back to other conversations. Thank we you. Have a, we have a petition, we have a petition around the, the room if you want to sign it, and if you're interested to go to the Board of Trustees today, just talk with me and talk with any of them, so we will tell you where we're going to meet and when we will be Let's give a hand to our speaker.